There's a supplement out there that is also a compound that your body creates itself that is also something that you can get in food. But reality is, to really get the beneficial amount that you need when you're looking at longevity, fat loss, muscle building, it really should be done in supplement forms so that you get adequate amounts. Now, TMG, trimethylglycine, is the supplement that we're talking about. And you're gonna find this in some pre-workouts in like relatively low doses, some protein powders, and then you'll find it independently. Now, all it really is is something called betaine. And you've probably seen that before, but people don't really know what it does, and they certainly aren't taking enough to get the adequate benefits. Specifically, when we start talking about longevity or we start talking about like the fat loss muscle building effect. Now, trimethylglycine is just a methylated form of the amino acid glycine. That probably sounds like Greek. What is a methylated form of something? It just means that it is an amino acid that has additional methyl groups that can be donated to help the body adapt to certain things. You see, methylation sounds really bad, but methylation is actually good when it's in the right context. Methylation turns on certain adaptations, certain genes, certain DNA functions, certain just functions in the body to begin with. So we need enough of these overall methyl groups for methylation to occur. So think of methylation as sort of a switch that turns on activity of certain cells and tissues and DNA. It's the simplest way to put it. The opposite of methylation is literally demethylation, and that's turning off the switch. So life and healthy aging and building muscle and burning fat is all a delicate balance of methylation and demethylation. But we're gonna get into the details of that a little bit more when we talk about the longevity piece. I wanna first talk about what TMG is and how it can impact fat loss first. There was a study that was published in the journal Nutrients. It was a meta-analysis systematic review that looked at six studies, so it was large-scale data. They found that giving subjects trimethylglycine significantly reduced fat mass, significantly reduced body fat percentage, but crazy enough, did not really reduce their body weight it didn't change their BMI. This is super interesting because what this tells us is that it was very specifically helping the body burn fat while preserving, possibly even building muscle. I mean, this is something that quite frankly, we've reserved just to the world of performance enhancing drugs to be able to like have something that builds muscle and burns fat at the same time. So it almost sounds too good to be true, so we need to investigate it a little bit more. So there was another study that was published in Nutrients. This one was done on mice to understand the mechanisms a bit more, so check this out. This study demonstrated that TMG actually inhibited the production of white fat. White fat is the subcutaneous kind of fat we don't want, right? It's the typical belly fat type stuff. It inhibited the production of that. Now, how it did that, it's a little bit of speculation, but one thing they found is that it increased what's called mitochondrial biogenesis and sort of the energy demand there. So it actually increased the amount of brown fat, which increased thermogenesis and calories dispersed as heat, but more importantly, sort of blocked fuel from being accumulated in the form of white fat. Now, the thing with brown fat and white fat, brown fat is much more powerful in rodents than it is in humans. So when you look at rodent model data and brown fat stuff, you have to expect that it's gonna be exacerbated in rodents. Although we can extrapolate some of that to humans. But what is more relevant in humans is they found that it inhibited what is called fatty acid synthesis in the muscle. So in this study, they found specifically that there was less fat accumulation in the form of intramyocellular triglycerides, or less fat accumulating in the muscle. And they found that it inhibited fatty acid synthase, which is an enzyme that allows fat to form essentially in the muscle. So that was very interesting. But most importantly, they saw that there was a decrease in insulin resistance in both obese and non-obese mice. And researchers speculate that this was probably the biggest driver for improving muscle protein synthesis and decreasing the amount of overall fat accumulation. But we still have to answer the question of why they didn't lose muscle. Like a lot of times when you start having, I don't know, you take something in and you start losing weight, you're gonna lose a percentage of muscle too. But in this case, muscle 
possibly even increased. So with this, we look at a study that was published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. This took a look at two groups, and they were giving relatively low dose of 2.5 grams of betaine, TMG, or placebo per day. And they had them do three sets per muscle group at about six to seven reps to failure. So pretty decent volume, pretty decent stimulus. They found that training, of course, increased muscle in both groups, the betaine group and the placebo group, but there was a 2.9 kilogram increase in muscle in the TMG betaine group and a 1.9 uh, kilogram increase in the placebo group. So diet about the same, training the same, but the TMG group, betaine, gained a kilogram more muscle. Interestingly enough, there was only a small increase in strength, nothing notable, just muscle mass. So it's doing something very metabolic, perhaps a little less like biomechanical. Now that same journal published another paper looking at more trained individuals. In this case, it was a six week study with 2.5 grams of betaine or placebo, and they had them train six weeks doing uh, standard resistance training. They found some interesting results in the more trained group as well. They did muscle cross-sectional areas of their arm, and they found that after six weeks of training, there was a decrease in fat mass and an increase in muscle cross-sectional area in the arm. So they literally built muscle. Here's what's wild. The placebo group had an increase in intracellular muscle water, but the betaine group did not. What is really interesting about this is that you would have expected a supplement to increase water weight. Like if someone goes on steroids or something like that, they gain water weight too. Sure, they gain muscle, but they gain water weight when they're like on a cycle or something. So in this particular case, the placebo group actually gained more intracellular water in their muscle. So the TMG, I don't know what it was doing with the water, uh, who knows, but the bottom line is that they increased their muscle cross-sectional area and muscle weight more than the placebo group, even though the placebo group had gained water weight in the muscle. It's mind blowing. And again, we don't have a full explanation of what's going on. However, in that same study, there is some interesting mechanistic stuff. And then there's other studies that have identified this as well. They found that there are increases in IGF, increases in human growth hormone, and increases in AKT pathway or AKT phosphorylation, which has to do with muscle protein synthesis. So all these things have to do with how much muscle we're able to build. So perhaps it's kickstarting those a little bit more so muscle protein synthesis is increased. Now we get into the extremely interesting stuff where we talk about how TMG has profound, and I mean profound impacts on longevity. But first, outside of supplements, like where can you get TMG? What kind of foods? Well, the first place you can get TMG or betaine is going to be beets. And it's an easy one to remember because beets, betaine, right? So when in doubt, have some beets, plus the nitric oxide effect. It's a very good compound to just consume alongside TMG because it's all very good for homocysteine and vascularization and overall just like blood flow. Okay, so that's a good one. Shrimp, as far as meat and seafood is concerned, is just about the highest TMG content that you're going to find. Spinach as well, but I have some qualms about raw spinach. I would prefer that it's cooked. Okay, and then what's interesting, wheat bran, has the highest amount of TMG than any food that's out there with over 1300 milligrams per 100 gram serving. Compare that to like beets that have like 200. Okay, so huge, huge difference, but I don't recommend people just go scarfing wheat bran because there's other issues that come with that, especially if you're sensitive to gluten. So that may not be the route that you wanna go. I went ahead and I put a link down below for 30% off through Thrive Market because they have some really cool beet options. So like freeze dried beets, uh, different kinds of like bags of beets that are just air dried or whatever so you can get your betaine in. They have lots of wheat bran options, but they also straight up have TMG supplements as well. I have no affiliation with any TMG brand at all. I just figured this is a way that you can just choose the option that you wanna choose and get 30% off. So you get 30% off your entire first grocery order through Thrive Market. They're an online grocery store. So load up your cart, whatever you want, 30% off. Plus you get a free $60 gift when you use that link down below in the description. So that link, again, gets you 30% off. You can get some beets, you can get some TMG, whatever. No pressure. You can skip through this if you don't want it. But at the end of the day, it saves you some money. So that link is down below, top line in the description. We need to talk homocysteine. This is really important. I have a very scary statistic for you, okay? And it comes from a very reputable study that looked at over 27,000 people, okay? Homocysteine is a serious thing. 
the highest levels of homocysteine were related to an 80% increase in all-cause mortality above those that had low levels of homocysteine. So if you have high homocysteine, you have an 80% higher chance of dying of anything based on these statistics than if you had low levels of homocysteine. Essentially, for every five micromole per liter increase in homocysteine, you have a 33% increased chance of dying. That is insane. Homocysteine is one of the strongest predictive indicators, as far as lab work is concerned, of when, how unhealthy someone is and their risk of all-cause mortality. Now, TMG has long been associated with lowering homocysteine because it converts it into methionine, which can get excreted and removed. We used to think before that you would need at least six grams of betaine to have the homocysteine lowering effect. However, there was a recent study that took a look at 1.5 grams compared to three grams compared to six grams. And they found that there was a respective 12, 15, and 20% decrease in homocysteine levels at those amounts. So it looks like you can take a lower amount of TMG or betaine and still get the effect, but it is dose dependent. The more you take, the more you lower homocysteine. So if your homocysteine levels are high, you may wanna seriously consider increasing that dose. There's no real downside that people have found. I can't find anything in the literature that finds a downside. It's just a methylated amino. You could be wondering what the heck homocysteine does. Uh, to make it very, very simple, it predominantly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. That's where it's most noted. Okay, but it can also just cause circulatory and vascular damage to begin with. So this can lead to all kinds of different things, not just cardiovascular disease. Now, here's the big piece for longevity. Remember how I mentioned that TMG is a methyl donor? As we get older, we lose some of our ability to methylate. That is exactly why when we age, our ability to adapt and change and express certain genes and have DNA changes that we want to occur happen. Like it just gets harder as we get older. So the more that we can contribute to quote unquote our methyl pool, the better. Now, this is one thing. The other side of the equation is we need to increase what's called NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. One of the common ways to do that is through supplementation of something that's called NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. And I know I've talked about it on this channel and don't worry, I'm not pitching you a product or anything. I'm literally just talking about NMN. If you use NMN to increase your energy and your cellular energy availability, it does come at a small cost. There is something that is called the SAVAGE pathway. And in order to increase NAD from NMN, so if you're taking an NMN supplement, you have to be aware of this, you actually decrease your methyl pool because you require a lot of methyl groups, methyl donors, to convert NMN or ultimately create NAD through NMN. Big problem. It's like you increase NAD, but then you decrease your methylation ability. What's interesting is combining TMG with NMN actually cancels that out. So it allows you to get the NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide improvement from NMN without the methyl pool depletion. This is huge. And I know it may sound like Greek, but let's just put it simply. If you take something like NMN to improve longevity, you're improving one direction of it, but you're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. This way, you are paying Peter and paying Paul. Everybody's happy. There's one other really important thing. I have made it a mission this year to make a bigger push to take care of my gut health. I eat well, but actually focusing on gut health. There is some interesting literature starting to come out that suggests that TMG improves gut barrier integrity at least mechanistically, by doing a couple of things. It decreases the expression of what is called a toll-like receptor, TLR4, in the gut, and it actually increases the expression of a protein called zonulin, which restores gut barrier integrity. So this is fascinating newer research that's showing that taking betaine, trimethylglycine, could actually repair potentially a leaky gut, or at the very least, make your gut stronger, and then at that, it's also improving the microbiome, but there's a lot of things that improve the microbiome, so I don't wanna draw any inference there. Bottom line, this stuff is cheap, this stuff is effective, 
and it's effective at doses as low as two and a half grams up to 10 grams. And it's effective for longevity, for fat loss, and for muscle building. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.